I know, full of self-doubt And to be honest, it has never brought me down No, 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 no I'm really glad I'm not walking around Believe in my inflated eight brains Figured it out Suddenly you realize that everything you ever told yourself were lies. And believe me, I can sympathize. Cause everything I ever thought I was made me cry. Like... In your big search for who you are And I don't care that I sound arrogant But knowing who you are is just for amateurs And suddenly you realize Yeah, that everything you ever told yourself were lies Everybody, welcome. So I'm getting a few people in here. Uh, if people don't want to listen and want to cause chaos in the chat, I'm going to remove you. We're going to be fair. We're going to be concise. And we are going to talk about things. Some people might like it. Some people won't. Um, I understand that. But I'm still going to have, of course, DC on. So we got DC in the background. Everybody just coming in, smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. There's a lot to talk about because there's a lot that was alleged uh, happening last night. I'm going to bring DC on right now and we're going to get into the thick of things. Welcome, everybody. Hey, DC, you there? Hi, Amanti. Hey, what's up? Oh, not much. What's up with you? Uh, nothing. Just going through all the stuff that happened last night, man. This is a doozy. Yeah, a lot of drama. It is a lot of drama. A lot of things said. Um, one thing that I am concerned with is um, a lack of proof. Like, I'm not going to say something did or didn't happen, but a lot of people keep presenting things without proof. They sure do. And that is my problem, is that uh, with people are consistently 
let in listening to people saying certain things and alleging that somebody's doing something without showing any proof because there's a lot of disconnection when I um, listened to that stream that Sam did uh-huh. where it's like, okay, she has two phone numbers and then she, she's saying that it's this person, but where's the proof that connects that person? Because there's a, there's a lot of silliness happening here where um, it just doesn't make any sense. You're, you're saying that I, I, this guy who's proficient and hacking and doing certain things is now having his Google number forwarded into his actual phone number. That don't make no sense to me. No, it doesn't, does it? It does not. It really does not because I listened to that stream, which is now privated, by the way, but I still have the video. And it just doesn't make any sense. Like, if you're proficient, like, I used to use a thing called Fire RTC and um, Bob RTC. So I know how the spoofing and the calling and everything goes, right? Because it, it just really doesn't make any sense to me that he calls you to, to harass you with the Google voice number. And then within hours, less than 24 hours, within hours, he then forwards his Google voice number to his real number so that when you call the Google voice, it forwards to his real number. Does that make sense to you people? Exactly. Does that make sense? Doesn't you think that's a little bit dumb? Because they're saying that they called his Google voice number because they're alleging that it's his Google voice number and then it goes to his actual number and that is making sense to a lot of people people have this outrage yep. without really understanding and looking at the facts here exactly and and i'd love to know what it is that i have to do with any of this right and then they're alleging that you are part of this whole conspiracy and everything and uh yeah and next is part of it and then you're conspiring with this guy i'm like it doesn't make no sense Look, I just want to make it very clear. Negs has never, ever in his life communicated publicly or privately with Zoom or anybody in that circle. Never. This has never happened. Um, As you know, Monty, I am in a Discord with Zoom and a number of other people. But to then say that I am in any way orchestrating some great criminal enterprise is absurd And if somebody is going to make that allegation, I would love it if they would provide evidence for this. Because honestly, it's getting ridiculous. And all that's happening is that these much larger channels are stirring up hate mobs that are capable of doing just about anything, including IRL, which they have already done in the past. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not cute. And I am tired of it. That's why on my channel, I demand that people who are coming on as guests to make allegations provide evidence for their claims. But nobody else seems to hold anyone to any kind of a standard when they're making these kinds of allegations. They're very serious. Exactly. I think that needs to be the standard in this community right now. So I have I've wholeheartedly agreed with you because there's too many too many claims going out there that don't make any sense once you do your research because people are just taking people's word for it and not looking things up. Oof says Google Voice can be turned on and off. Thanks for bringing that up, Oof, because if you listened to the live stream that is now privated, uh, it was said specifically that, uh, oh, they thought he he turned off the Google Voice number. So why if the Google Voice number is turned off, as in um, you're, you're suspending your Google Voice number, why the hell is it still forwarding calls to his actual number? That don't make no sense. I don't know anything about Google Voice. Oh, I, I am know. a complete I, moron when it comes to Google Voice. I know about Google Voice, and I did hours of research on it about the conditional call forwarding and how it can't un- unmask. It cannot unmask spoof numbers. And with Google Voice, con- Google Voice is also con- both. Okay, let me go. Let me tra- backtrack. So Trap Call does conditional call forwarding. So does Google Voice. They both do it. That's why it's extremely difficult to use both of them in tandem. So what Trap Call does is it it when you get a call, it uh, you have to decline the call, and then it it forwards the call to their servers, which unmasks the the phone number, as in it strips away all the the fake information and gives you the real number, and then you you get that number. Um, uh, through the trap call, so that's what that's what they do. That's why you have to have call forwarding 
as part of your phone plan so that trap call can work. A trap call doesn't work without call forwarding. Uh huh. So you have to have that as a plan. So so what basically what happens when somebody calls you, you decline the call, and then they don't know that you decline the call. The person who's calling you make uh, harassing you, and then trap call um, shows you the number um once after a few seconds so that's how it works because i i did look this up i did hours of research on this stuff so i know i know what's going on plus i'm already i was already familiar with trap call and google voice google voice is also another service with conditional uh call forwarding as in uh it has the ability to um send calls uh that that go to the google voice number to your actual number so what doesn't make sense to me is that he would be allegedly supposedly harassing them but yet now he's forwarding his google voice number to his real number that makes zero sense to me right that's right. just silliness exactly because, because and then they say oh he he must have turned off his google voice if his google voice is turned off then google voice wouldn't be forwarded into his actual number because the service is turned off right Again, um, I would love it if any of the people making these allegations would prove definitively that Negs and I have anything to do with this in any way, shape, or form. This yeah. is ridiculous. What's the proof that you had anything to do with this? Right. I mean, do we even know who the hell is um, calling them? And then we have two people at least that I saw in the comment section uh, claiming a responsibility for calling them. They, they, like, I, I heard the voice of the, the, the person who call them and I'm like, what does DC have to do with what what do you have to do with any of this? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Listen, a couple of weeks ago I went on my channel and I issued a warning to the community. Like any good reporter, I got the facts, I went on my channel and I said the community is now being watched, if you want to even call it that, or has caught the attention of certain communities on 4chan. Mm -hmm. and they don't take kindly to certain types of behavior. The top thing that will get you on their radar is if you start making threats involving interfering with another person's family. Anything that has to do with children, they do not take kindly to. And I said that as a public service. I, you know, people can scoff, as, uh, scoff at me as much as they like, but that is what is happening. Now, mm -hmm. I have no control over anybody on 4chan. I have no control over the people who I am in a Discord with. They, if indeed they were the ones who called, if anyone in the Discord called. I have no way of controlling who they do and do not like and who they do and do not like to contact or whatever. I have no control over it. I reported it. I am not, I cannot be held responsible for what is happening any more than any reporter can be held responsible for reporting what is happening in the current moment. That is completely absurd. People are trying to shoot the messenger. They're trying to bring Negs into this, and he has nothing to do with it. And it's really gotten old because now tensions are so high that um, people are focusing their attention on two people who had absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with this. And it is insane. It is completely crazy. Yeah, I'm really seeing that. Peach Cobbler says, Google Voice does for it to your actual number. I have it set up that way. That's my entire point, Peach Cobbler, that it, it can, you can uh, forward your Google Voice number to your actual number. But remember, they said that um, let me get the specific uh, quote here that his, uh, his Google Voice must be off when they're called, but then they, the Google Voice forward um, the call to his actual number. So, okay, there's two things here. Two, two things cannot, cannot um, be reconciled. If your Google Voice number is disconnected, as in turned off, um, from your actual phone number, then there's no way for Google Voice to forward to your phone number because you've just discon you you've disconnected the service. As in, you're not you're telling Google that hey, Google Voice, I no longer want the service to forward to my actual number. The service is not active, is what I'm saying. So when they're saying, oh, uh, his Google Voice must be off, then how the hell is it still forwarding to his actual number? 
that does not make any sense. Mm -hmm. Is what I'm saying. So people look at the facts here. That w a lot of the things that was said just don't make any sense whatsoever. And still, like you have a, a person who's supposed to be competent doing stuff like that. Uh, he he calls you, um, threatens you, and then f forwards his Google voice to his actual phone number. Seriously? You know? Yeah, it just, it really doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and again, I am past the point of being sick and tired of this rush to judgment uh, on the part of people in the community. I'm tired of it. And what can I do about it? Well, there are a number of avenues that I can take. Um, I haven't decided on what I'm going to do about it yet. But people are getting panicked. People are scared. They think that I'm that Negs and I are involved in some great conspiracy with Chantal, which is ridiculous. Um, they think that we are somehow manipulating Chantal to report people's channels. I think people tend to forget that Chantal's anger at certain channels goes back years. It has nothing to do with us whatsoever. Um, and we don't control Chantal any more than she controls us or anyone else. It's ridiculous. Um, and it, it amazes me. It amazes me now that the bottom has kind of fallen out of the Chantal market, if you will, just like it fell out. Uh, of the Amberlynn Reed market. People realized that they couldn't make money talking about Amberlynn Reed anymore or because they thought that she had gotten too boring. Uh, then they started focusing on Chantal because there was a lot of exciting stuff going on in her life and mm -hmm. the Chantal market was popping. And now that Chantal is kind of dull, I mean, the best that they can do is talk about the hamsters and whether hamsters are haram in Islam and things of that nature. Um, and so now everybody's looking for new targets. And you were a target for a while, Monty, until that frenzy died down. And now uh, people are focusing in on me, on myself and Negs. And I understand how the game works. I get it. I get it. But the problem is that if you are going to spread lies, if you are going to spread lies about people and then upload videos encouraging people to call CPS or saying that you've called CPS or sending the police to our door over Twitch beef, um, we've got a problem. We've got a real problem. And there are members of the community who have openly bragged about contacting Negs's mother, about doxing Negs's phone number, about going IRL on him. And this goes back years. This is, and it is still going on. I listened to your mm -hmm. stream yesterday and people were saying, oh my God, why is she dredging up this old stuff? It's not old stuff. Negs's mother just got another call a couple of days ago. Um, and there are now these threats being posted on Twitter to interfere with her business. And I don't understand why certain members of the community are not being held with their feet to the fire and asked, why are you doing this? Why are you involving people's families? Why are you involving relatives? Why are you trying to get the police and CPS involved just because you don't like what somebody has to say on the internet? It is outrageous. But there is a huge double standard, a huge mm -hmm. double standard, and nobody is holding anyone accountable. I don't know if that's because of fear. I don't know if it's just because they don't like us. I don't know what the deal is, but people need to take a closer look at what is going on and what has been going on. And if you disagree with it, then disagree with it across the board, for God's sake. Yeah, I think there is a, a like, even when you bring facts to the table, because somebody is in a, a camper crew, right, they'll just overlook what, you know, uh, what's obvious. You know, in all honesty, I do... Um, hope the authorities uh, get put into this because it's going too far. And if a lot of people are lying, then um, when the authorities are involved, it's it's a lot different, right? Because if you lie here and you know you your lie goes over, you get caught. You don't have any consequences, but you will have consequences when the authorities are involved. Yeah, so of are course. Are we at that point, or do you think we're at that point right now? Did they actually go to the? Um, authorities? Well, I mean, some people are claiming that they've been going to the police every day for nearly a year. Um, and um, I mean, Hussey uploaded a video on his channel, which is still there, saying um, CPS knows about XYZ. 
uh, which and then he denies calling CPS, just like he denied calling the police on us, which he lied about. We know he did. And to say CPS knows about XYZ, wouldn't any logical person extrapolate and say, oh, that means he contacted CPS? Or at least he knows that somebody in his community did. You know, I need to reiterate to everyone that involving CPS in an internet beef is so unbelievably outrageous and disgusting because every time, and this hasn't happened to us, just so that everybody knows, every time that somebody falsely reports someone to CPS over an internet beef means that that one social worker is not tending to a child who is actually in danger. And when you live in a small town the way we do, CPS is stretched to the maximum. And nobody, no resources should be wasted investigating a child who is loved, well taken care of, and who is not in danger. There are other kids who could die because of the irresponsibility of people trying to resolve their internet beefs by involving a an official agency in the family of someone that they have never met. It is insane. Mm -hmm. And I would also like to remind everyone that Little Negs is in school. He is surrounded by mandated reporters, surrounded by them. If there had ever been a hint that there was something untowards happening in the home or that Little Nags was being neglected or abused in any way, it would have come to the attention of the authorities long ago. But the fact that people don't like Nags or they don't like me and they think that he is being neglected or that Nags isn't paying enough attention to him, first of all, you don't live in our home. You don't know what's going on with that kid. You don't know anything. But you are using and exploiting scant resources. And let me let me just explain another thing about where we live. We live in a very small town. We live in a small town that has an enormous amount of poverty, a lot of a raging drug problem, including methamphetamines and um, opioids. There are three unsolved murders that this tiny police department is investigating at the current moment. They do not have the time, the inclination, or the resources to get sent out on wild goose chases just because somebody says something on the internet that somebody else doesn't like. It is unbelievable. It is a grotesque abuse of official authority. Outrageous. It would be bad enough if we lived in a large city, but to live in a small town and have people wasting police time and CPS time is just outrageous. It is indeed. It is indeed. But um, I, I'm not even sure how things are going to go from here because, you know, um, uh, there's a lot of talk about authorities and calling the cops and, you know, about the phone calls and whatnot. Like I've said, I think if they did call, if they did go to the authorities, which they say they, they did in the morning, then maybe it's for the best so that people can not be coming on here and telling lies because, you know, things are exactly. investigated. Yeah, investigate it. Go ahead. Investigate the calls. If somebody calls you up and they threaten you, by all means, contact the authorities. But don't you go on your channel and or on Twitter and start making wild accusations about who placed the call if you do not know for a fact who did it. And certainly don't rope other people into a conspiracy when you have absolutely no proof that that conspiracy exists. It is crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I just hope people can see that, that, you know, there needs to be proof when people make these accusations because, okay, they, they have a recording and they're saying it's these numbers, but uh, that, that uh, what was it? That was it a 973 number, but you could get that from online and you know uh yeah it was the 973 number and mm -hmm. just say oh it's it's uh it's zoom because it's it's from this number but that's been that's been out there for 12 years i was exactly online and there is a site that has that number on there since 2010. that's right so that's anybody right. could just say oh it's from this number without showing any proof of you know uh, how they how they came to that conclusion and people will just oh okay we'll just listen to you without any of this proof and this has been a constant theme for years in the community where people just listen to what somebody is saying without that person saying telling or providing any proof any concrete evidence to back up their claims right right and, and especially when i'm i'm saying that it doesn't make any sense that 
they're saying that the Google number is off, but yet it's forwarded into his real number. That doesn't make any logical sense for a person who's supposed to be proficient to be doing that. Yeah, and if you know anything about Zoom's background, I don't know if you've read up on him, but I mean, the guy, the guy's history goes back to the blood sports days, you know, um, and there was a lot of rough and tumble. There was a lot of aggro. Um, there were a lot of hurt fifis during the blood sports days. The guy was not born yesterday. And it seems to me to be un unimaginable that a mistake like that or a slip up like that could have been made if indeed he did place the call. It's yeah. ridiculous. It is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your, your Google voice forward to your actual number, that's completely ridiculous. No, like who would make a mistake like that? Yeah, not, I, I, yeah, like you said, he's been around for a long time. He's allegedly, supposedly a federal asset. I never heard that one. That's well, a new one that, on me. That, that's what they're they're saying. <laughs> so for, so for somebody who's supposed to be around for that long and knows what they're doing to make a mistake like that mm -hmm. is just it. People just use your use your brains, use your logic, please. You know, don't just ha listen to somebody saying something without any proof because this has happened to people time and time again. People just come up. They have, you know, a lot of subscribers, they have a backing, they have a following, they just say stuff, blame it on somebody else without mm -hmm. any actual concrete evidence and stir up a mob. And that is just not right. 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 I mean, we've seen it time and time again. And it is, um, it's not cool. I mean, it happens in every community. This is hardly a unique situation. Um, but it is, it's just not cool. It's not cool because you're not thinking through the repercussions of what you're doing. Or um, the other possibility is that you're just trying to use your community to act as your vigilantes and go out and harass and go IRL on somebody, somebody that you don't like. Um, inexcusable. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So, um, hey, um, how is everything though with you uh, from this uh, from this whole thing that happened last night into this morning? Oh, it's ridiculous. I mean, I didn't even find out about it until I fired up Discord this morning. I had no idea. I was sound asleep. So I found out about it this morning and I thought, oh God, here we go. Yet another day of this bullshit. And that's exactly what happened. I find it very interesting that Sam chose to private her stream. I wonder if somebody reminded her that um, blurting out a telephone number on YouTube is a violation of terms of service. Um, and indeed, the other person who streamed that video uh, was also violating terms of service. But that's something to keep in mind. Um, like I said, I don't even know if that's a real telephone number. I don't know anything. I don't know where that phone number came from. It could have come from Kiwi Farms. It could have come from anywhere. But um, I'm so good. anyway, it's just been crazy. I mean, yeah. it's just been one thing after the other after the other. It's open season, it seems. It seems so. It's like uh, creator versus creator or one, two, three creators going after one creator. It's like it's all over the place. Yeah. It is. It truly is all over the place. Furthermore, uh, what was I going to say? Um, we don't even know who even called them. No, we don't. That's the thing. We don't know. It could be anybody. It could be anybody. That's the problem. Yep. And what were you saying about people taking credit for placing the call? Yeah, there were um, people in the comment section saying, oh, uh, it was them. Uh, the <laughs> Uh -huh. the, the, the name of their handle was the Dark Dead Law saying, stop lying to your audience. I called you. I want the credit. Then somebody replied, Ducks are us. You stop lying. It was me. It's just... It's you just, see? It's the yeah. 4chan trolls. They're out in full force. It's the 4chan guys. They're having a good time. They're having a laugh. And that's why I say there is no way that anybody can control these people. No one can control what the 4chan people do, what the 8kun people do, what the Kiwi Farms people do. No one can control them. That is the point. Mm -hmm. You know? And so maybe instead of forming a circular firing squad or trying to come after people who haven't placed these phone calls, maybe you need to take some inventory and think about what it is that you might have done to attract their attention. 
This is the other thing. People are not taking accountability for what they are doing. This going IRL stuff, this trying to break up people's family stuff, it is not cute. It needs to stop. Yeah, it, it really does. It really does need to stop. And like I've said, and like you said, um, I think there needs to be a standard now where if somebody's going to say something, they need to provide proof. And, and proof isn't playing somebody else's video and taking it as fact because that seems to be happening where uh, we had Wady Willow's video being played yep. and taking it as fact. And then all of a sudden it's coming out that Wady Willow has embellished certain things about MFW. Oh, no, about Negs. Witty Widow, yeah. um, Witty Negs Widow and, and Witty Widow and Negs go back many years, and there's a lot of bad blood there for a number of reasons. Um, Witty Widow also took a screenshot of Negs's nine year old son and circulated it among a number of different people. Um, she took a picture of Negs's son in his underwear, which she had to zoom in on, take the picture through the crook of Negs's arm, and then proceeded to circulate it. And so I'm sorry, but this woman has a lot of reasons to lie. She has a lot of reasons to um, work out her grudges against Negs and now against me, a woman that she's never met. And so, you know, they're, they're playing these videos knowing, these old live streams, or they're listening to her streams knowing that she has a history going back years of lying and embellishing. She's even admitted that on stream. So, I mean, again... This is not a reliable source. She is not a reliable source. I mean, you can say a lot of things about me, all right? But at least I know Negs in person. I have spent weeks and weeks with this man, mm -hmm. 24 hours a day, with the son, with his entire family. I think I know him a little bit better than the people who are circulating conspiracy theories and lies on the Internet. So, um, you know, like I said, whatever that woman says, you take with a grain of salt. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you're right. You're right. So the whole idea that I'm trying to bring forward to people and I'm, you know, I'm trying to be fair is people need to stop playing other people's videos and then using those videos as fact because right. it's, it's done all too common. Like just because somebody is stating an opinion doesn't mean when you play their video, their opinion becomes fact. Right. Listen, I have learned this lesson the hard way. I mean, I had... Um, a number of people lie to me for two years about many, many things and about many people. And it was only in finally being able with the fullness of, of time to look back at the things that they had said, do the fact checking that in my, to my great shame, I did not do the first time around. Mm -hmm. and go back and say, wait a second, you all had a dog in the hunt, you all had a grudge, and you were using me to get a message out because you have a problem with somebody else. It's happened to me with a number of people, and these people continue to lie, they continue to spin, and then they tell everybody that I was using them. No, that is false. I had a much larger channel than most of these other creators, and they knew that they could come to me and tell me all kinds of wild stories, and I ran with them, which is embarrassing. But mm -hmm. I've spent the past couple of months trying to make good with all the people I wronged. Um, and unfortunately, this is a lesson that we all learn the hard way. I mean, for me, it was deeply shameful because of what I do for a living. And I trusted the wrong people, and that was a huge mistake on my part. So um, that's exactly why when I saw what was being done to you, I thought, oh, yes, I know this playbook. I know the playbook. I've seen it. I've seen it used on me. I've seen the same people manipulate me. I've seen the same people manipulate other people. And yep. it is a very, very dangerous thing. I mean, when somebody, Monty, goes on stream and accuses you of committing crimes and then doesn't even bother to state what exactly those crimes are, I'm sorry, that person needs to be held accountable. That person needs to be asked specifically, what are you referring to? And exactly. if the person refuses to answer, then they lose. That's it. You win by default. It's over. It's finished. Yep, and that person still hasn't come up with what specific crimes I've done, minor or not. Right. And that person is GG. Right. Yeah, that will just make up anything and everything and will deny to his last breath that when you actually have video evidence of him saying something, 
<laughs> He'll deny that he ever said it. That's right. Even if you play that video right in front of him, he'll still just deny it. Yeah, I know. And even when you post screenshots of open conspiracies being conducted in discords, it's like it never happened. It's right. amazing. I wish I had that ability. I really do. I, I wish that I could just let all that stuff roll off my back and say, oh, yeah, I did that. But, you know, I'll pretend it didn't happen and therefore it didn't happen. It's an amazing skill. You know, I tend to get consumed by guilt. <laughs> Right, yeah, so there's so much going on. What do you think is going to happen at the end of all this? What do you think is going to happen at the end of 2023? Oh my god, Monty, I wish that I had a prediction for you. I really do. I I want, contrary to popular belief, um, I don't enjoy this, and Megs doesn't enjoy this. Uh, there's a lie circulating that we love this because it's content for us. Believe me, uh, we would love to be left alone. We would love it if people would just stop with the police and the threats and the CPS and all of that. We don't enjoy this at all. Uh, and we'd like to make content about something else. And I've already decided there are certain people whose names will never be spoken on my channel again because I'm tired of it. And so my challenge is if I don't mention you, you don't talk about me anymore. And I somehow think that that is not going to happen. But ultimately, it's got to end somehow. It has to be over one way or another. I don't know what it's going to take to make it stop. But I think that it would be very helpful if people would start holding all content creators across the board accountable for the things that they say and that they do. I understand that there is a huge appetite for drama and that people love it and people enjoy it because to them, it's a reality show. You know, mm -hmm. we're not real people. We're just people that they see on their computer or on their phone and they don't understand that what they say and what they actually do, forget the words, what they actually do and what they actually encourage their audiences to do has a real world impact on real people. And if you think that that is unfair, untowards, criminal, whatever, then you should hold these content creators accountable. Um, and I don't see a lot of that going on. I see a lot of double standards in the community. Yeah, there is a lot of double standards where, you know, some people will literally see that whoever they're back in is being untruthful, but they still, you know, go along with it. Right. Or they'll believe it because they don't know any better. Yeah. Uh, you know. But that's the thing is like, I'm trying to, you know, trying to show or teach people like, hey, you gotta, you gotta... Okay, somebody said something about this other person, you know, person A says something about person B, but have you looked up what, you know, uh, trap call is or how it works or how Google Voice works? And uh -huh. is it logical that, you know, they're saying something is happening when if you really look into it, is, mm -hmm. is it, is it, does it have the ability to happen? And this is what people need to do rather than just, you know, trust in somebody's word because, hey, I get it. You like a creator. Or you like their content. You've been watching them for a couple months or a couple years. But that doesn't mean that that creator um, can't lie. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, and, yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of lore going back years with Kiwi Farms and how Kiwi Farms is used as a vehicle for people to work out their personal or online grudges. Um, and they can feel free to do so behind the anonymity of an avatar. Yep. And so that's why people should also be very careful when they consume this material. Look, Kiwi Farms is very good for one thing, and that's for archiving. Um, when it comes to archiving, they're great because they snatch up and record just about everything. But when it comes to any opinions that are stated as fact on that website, you need to be very, very, very careful. Very careful. And I see a lot of people who are parroting and repeating and circulating a lot of untruths that they read on Kiwi Farms that are written oftentimes by people who have an axe to grind. Yep. And you don't even know what that axe is, but there is an axe to grind. Or they're just people who love to stir up trouble and they're having fun. Um, relating to another bunch of people who are giving them ass pats and thumbs up on that website. But you have to be very, very, very careful. Exactly. You do. 
and I just wish people would understand this, but there's there's this disconnect between like uh, the amount of people that watch a certain creator on YouTube versus the amount of people that follow them on Twitter versus the amount of people that would actually go and read the farms. Like there's a lot more on YouTube versus, you know, um, less that uh, follow them on Twitter and a whole lot less than even people who know to navigate the farms. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of things that your uh, creator might do on YouTube and then they're totally 180 when you look at them on Twitter and I've heard it said time oh yeah I'm again like hey uh, this person is totally different on Twitter like the stuff that they say on Twitter versus what they do on YouTube isn't practically night and day right right and so if you are going to go on Twitter or on YouTube or anywhere else and accuse somebody of committing a felony or accuse somebody of committing a crime or neglecting their child or any of that stuff, you'd better damn well come with proof. You'd better damn well come with evidence um, because otherwise uh, you, are, you are committing an act of slander and or defamation, it depends, libel or slander depending on whether or not it's spoken or written. And the, the First Amendment does not cover slander and libel. So or fighting words for that matter. So you need to keep that in mind. People think that this is a big game. It's not a game. It's not funny. It's not cute. It really isn't. Mm -hmm. It isn't. Um, but uh, we shall see what happens uh, for the rest of today. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, the end of 2022, going into 2023, it seems as there's a lot of chaos, a lot of new people coming in. There's always new channels uh, coming up in the Girlverse. Like, uh, the, the, the environment is a lot different from, like, a year ago. I'm sure you would agree with this, DC. Absolutely, where, yeah. yeah. Where some, a lot of channels have come and gone. I've seen it in my small time. Here, I've seen a lot of channels come and go, and I'm sure you've seen a lot more. Look, um, it is part of the ebb and flow of creating content. Channels will rise and they will fall. TV shows are huge hits, and then they end up getting canceled. You never know. People lose interest, or people are always looking for the next new thing. So there are new channels that come along and they provide something that you can't provide and people will turn away from you and they will turn to new channels. The problem is that instead of struggling against this reality and trying to fight it and then trying to destroy other channels because your channel is losing views or you're losing subscribers, find a way to diversify. Talk about more than one subject. Try and experiment. Some of your experiments may fail. That is perfectly okay. That's part of the process. But stop using your audience to fight your battles for you and stop getting so crazed because you see your view count drop. If it is your sole source of income, then try to find something else to do and try to find something else to talk about. That is just the way things go. Exactly. You know, I mean, you've got... Um, Who's, who's a new person? Uh, I would think of, oh, Lordy, it's Jordy. Oh, Lordy, it's Jordy covers Amberlynn Reed. Nobody cares about Amberlynn Reed, but his views are very strong because, oh, Lordy, it's Jordy has a really engaging, pleasant personality. And so people tune in to listen to him because they like what he has to say. They don't even care about Amberlynn. That is, she's almost secondary. So, oh, Lordy, it's Jordy has found a way to attract an audience, viewing some of the most boring content on the internet um, and he's doing very very well so if you find that your views have dropped from 20 or 30,000 for a video down to 10 then maybe that's a you problem but don't blame another creator who's doing better or another creator who you think is trying to sabotage your channel it's your responsibility to try and find content that attracts those eyeballs very true. I think people need to diversify. I see a few channels doing that right now. And thanks for bringing this up. Uh, it's it's the thing where, you know, some pe people have been, you know, deep rooted in like go uh, deep rooted in reacting to one specific person. Mm -hmm. And they've been doing it for years. They see other channels coming up, getting, you know, some views and they see their views are going down. And at the end of the day, it's about money, right? So what's, right. what's, what's the one thing to do when you see a channel coming up, your views are going down, you don't want to diversify, You, some channels would try their best to 
you know, throw shade at another channel or destroy that channel. And I've seen it time after time after time. Right. I mean, look at the uh, look at the Shani and Rev market. Just look at that. Look at how many channels have devoted thousands of hours to covering those two. And now um, a lot of those channels are struggling in the views department. Not all of them. Some of them are still doing okay. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them are struggling because the interest is no longer there. And because now, let's be honest, the kids are out of the house. Um, the kids are now in foster care. We don't know how they're doing, but presumably they're doing better. Um, and we've got Shani and Rev. And quite frankly, their story is incredibly depressing. So how much more milk can you squeeze from that stone or how much more blood can you squeeze from that stone? Um, you know, it, it's just a mistake. It's a huge mistake. And again, if you cannot find a way to attract an audience, well, what they're doing is they're looking for other targets. And some of them tried to do it with us and um, they failed or they decided to stop talking about us for reasons that they can explain on their own channels. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, there's only so much time that you can spend reviewing a couple that are now basically homeless. Um, what it, What is left to say about these two? What is left to say? I mean, do what you want. That's I'm not telling you not to. I'm just saying that, um, you know, it's just not a good idea to put all your eggs in one very unstable basket. Yeah, very true. Very, very true. But um, people are still doing it. I mean, uh, you, you got to see that the, the train is going to derail further down on the track, but people are still heading towards that derailment full speed while trying to derail other people's channels in, you know, in a very nasty, mean way by saying things without any backing or proof. Or, or what's worse is when they say things without any backing or proof than when there's proof that this person didn't do anything mm -hmm. it's never oh uh let me let me um put an update on this situation and apologize to this person for what i said previously because now it's come out that they actually didn't do this or that or that you know x y or z there's never that right never right. any that's, apology that's and a huge the, problem it is a huge problem and then the worst is that they keep up the old videos and even after proof has come out this person didn't do anything they keep up the old videos. I know the person who um, was accused of something that they didn't do has to constantly have people come in the chat saying all these like idiotic things about them. That just right. isn't true. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And look, I mean, I have noticed an uptick in the number of subscribers I have. And I have noticed um, my videos aren't necessarily doing better in terms of views overall. It's not like I'm breaking the 10,000 mark or even close or even the 5,000 mark. I've had a couple of videos that have done pretty well, mostly because um, the audience does not like the creator I'm talking about. And I understand that. Mm -hmm. But um, obviously, um, and you can say it's all hate watchers. It doesn't matter. A view is a view. That's what it comes down to. But what I am noticing is that more and more people are starting to listen. More and more people are starting to realize, holy crap, I believed a lot of stuff and I had no evidence for it. And now I'm hearing the other side of the story. Maybe I'm going to sit down and think about it. Because one of the problems that we get locked into if we are under assault, either in uh, either because we're being attacked in our personal lives because of these threats or because our channel is under attack is that we tend to focus solely on the people who are who dislike us and who are coming for us. What we're not seeing is a bigger picture of the silent viewers or of the people who come into chat and say, holy crap, I'm so sorry, I believed XYZ, now I don't believe it anymore because I heard your side of the story and now I appreciate it. Um, and I, I'm glad that you said it. Now I have a better foundation. Um, so people who are getting arrogant and cocky and thinking that all that they have to do is keep on pumping out lies and they can continue to brainwash a mass amount of people. No, that is your audience. That is your hug box. You're not taking a larger view of what is happening in the larger community. Um, and you can say whatever you want to about the people who post in my chat. I don't really care. But the point is, I see what I see, and I know what I know. 
So um, it's just very unwise. And it's very unwise when you feel like your back is up against the wall to keep on making threats. That is not a good idea. It's not a good look. And it's going to backfire in one way or another. It's, it is going to backfire. It's just not good. If you have a bad temper and you can't control your temper, then maybe put the phone down or step away from the computer until you've had a couple of hours to think about it or leave those tweets in drafts and don't send them out right away um, and just think about what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, uh, well, I mean, um, I, I, keep, I keep harping at this one thing I keep saying on my channel. Hopefully there is a positive change in all of this. If, if uh, authorities need to be called to keep people from not blatantly lying on others, then I'm all for it because this, the lying bullshit is too much. I cannot stand the lying bullshit. And my eyes have been opened for a few months now where if somebody says something, I got to see what proof they have. And if they don't have the proof, maybe I'll mm -hmm. you know look into it myself. But I just really wish that there would be this standard where people provide the proof whenever mm -hmm. they say certain things. And I'm, you've said it before. And... Um, I, I'm agreeing with you. Like when people say things, they need to provide the proof. Right. Right. It's very simple. I, you know, I don't know why this has turned into such a point of contention. You know, when I set down the rules for people coming onto my channel to debate me or to have a conversation with me, and everybody freaked out, and an entire community came over to post comments saying that I was being unreasonable, all I asked was, turn your camera on and provide proof for all your claims. I, I don't understand what the problem is, and the fact that everybody is freaking out over those two very simple demands tells me everything I need to know, you know? Right, exactly. It's like, this needs to be the standard. So um, if authorities are watching or investigating, then I'm all for it. Because then that just means, you know, people people can't just be and keep lying like that. So I welcome what 2023 brings and everything. So um, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I, I hope that everything calms down um, because... Nobody needs this stress. Nobody needs to go to bed afraid. Nobody needs to be in fear, okay? Um, but stop being so provocative. Stop provoking people. Stop accusing people of things that you have no proof of. Stop contacting the authorities because your feelings are hurt. Um, just cut it out. Cut it out. It is. It has gotten crazy. I mean, I thought that things were bad back in February on my channel, and they were bad, but nobody was calling the police, you know? Nobody was getting this insane, and why people have developed such a weird sort of parasocial connection to myself, to Negs, or to any creator, such that they would be emboldened to take real-life action against somebody that that creator doesn't like is incomprehensible to me. It is crazy. Absolutely crazy. I mean, luckily, I haven't had that many um, experiences with this kind of parasocial weirdness. I have with a couple of people in my community, and I had to throw them out um, because it was getting too weird and too close. And Negs has had that problem for years. But it seems to me that, um, I mean, I don't know how many trolls are in these chats. I don't know how many people are there just egging these creators on because they like the drama. Mm -hmm. And how many people genuinely believe what those people are saying. That is the thing that bothers me. Um, and I do not like getting blamed for stirring up dramas from years ago when these dramas have never been resolved. Um, all I'm doing is going out and presenting another side of a story so that people can make their own decisions. And somehow that means that I am creating a problem. No, I am presenting another side of the story. You can take it or leave it. But it is not stirring up drama when somebody has been lying for five years and to come out and say, no, actually, you weren't telling the truth and this is how I know, X, Y, Z. Um, I don't understand people getting hysterical over another side of a story being presented. It, it doesn't make sense to me. Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. 
I mean, I'd like to remind everybody that um, the the stalking and the harassment um, got to the point where it was so bad that um, I casually mentioned on my stream, I think it was during the summer, that Negs and I had gone house hunting and that we had taken a look at a house. We didn't, I didn't even mention, I don't think, the city that the house was in. And um, one person on Twitter took it upon herself to check out all the listings, uh, all the open listings, plug in the number of rooms and everything else, and then post the listing or post pictures of the house on her Twitter feed. And when I called her out on it and I said, you are weird, you need to back off, you need to stop, and she's like, well, I didn't post the address. Well, you don't have to post the address. There's something called reverse image search. People can look up that house. Now, as it turns out, we didn't make an offer on the house. But when people are getting that invested in what you do in your personal life, they need to take some inventory of what the hell their problem is and why they're so interested. This is one of the reasons why, um, I mean, Negs and I are going on vacation next week. We haven't disclosed where we're going, and we won't disclose where we've been until we've left because people are nuts, because people are going to try and do whatever they do, call the hotel, do whatever. And this is the other thing. I mean, you know, the people who, who are constantly saying, oh, Negs needs to leave the house, he needs to get a job, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Why? So that you can call the business and harass them, so that you can get him fired, so that you can leave negative Yelp reviews, so that you can have people come in and harass the business owner, harass the customers, or dox people? Are you kidding? We know how this game works. He makes a living on the internet. I'm sorry if you don't like it, but that's just the way it is. He has a kid that he looks after. He drives him to and from school. He takes him to the doctor. The kid needs supervision. Um, if I'm not around, there is nobody else to look after this child uh, during certain weeks. And so... Um, that's just the way it is. I mean, it's amazing how other people are allowed to make a living on the internet and nobody says, well, why aren't you out working in, you know, a bricks and mortar establishment? Mm -hmm. um, but I want people to think about that. Think about what would be done if Negs were to work outside the house. We all know what would happen. We know yeah. because we've seen it before. We have. You're speaking facts. People will, yeah, like you said, call the place. We'll try and get him fired from job to job. They'll just keep following him around. You know, looking him up, leaving the negative reviews, calling his boss, saying mean, nasty things that he, uh, that uh, they'll just make up anything and everything to get him fired. And then when he, if he does get let go, they'll look back at it, laugh, uh, right. or point out, oh, he can't keep a job. Well, maybe he can because you guys keep interfering in his, you know, his job, his lifestyle when he's trying to feed his family because you guys keep calling and leaving these negative, you know, uh, comments and calling in. And it's harassing. It is. And I know this for a fact because this was done to me. So I know exactly what these people are capable of. And they think that it's a big joke. They think it's hilarious. They're playing to the audience. And, um, you know, I, I had a lot of close calls at work because of the harassment, because of the tweets directed at my employer, uh, because of lies that were told about me, um, that my employer had to investigate it was it was a nightmare so um i know how these people work i know it for a fact yes for sure exactly you carry about said don't announce it online there's tons of ways that people find out like they know his name they can look him up a lot of things are very public exactly uh, online as long as you you know what to look for and where to look for it so you know, an aspect of this is that, you know, people people will try and get you fired anyhow, anywhere, anytime yep. for whatever reason, because, you know, they're part of a crew or team or they don't like that you are not cool with their favorite creator. There's all sorts of bullshit that goes on. Yep. That's right. That's right. People have an amazing ability um, to expend an enormous amount of energy trying to undermine and destroy somebody that they don't like. I've seen that firsthand. Um, and when the, the truth doesn't work, then they just spread lies. And when they spread lies, then they motivate strangers to go out and try to destroy the lives of other people. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Exactly. It is, and it's a reality.
And keep in mind, some people have nothing better to do. Some people's entire lives are lived on the internet. Some people's sole social interactions take place on the internet. They don't have family, or they don't have friends in real life, or they have codependent relationships with another person who is equally invested. And so when you say, well, don't you have anything better to do? Some people literally have nothing better to do. This, this is the kind of thing that consumes their entire life. They have nothing. I mean, look, I heard somebody on your panel yesterday or the day before suggest that I don't have real friends because I don't show my real friends on my channel. I would have to be out of my goddamn mind to show my real friends on my channel. I would never, ever show my real friends. I mean, I've shown my friend Frank. My friend Frank lives in Cambodia. Good luck getting to him. Um, I've shown people that I've gone to college with. Good luck getting to them. I mean, if you insist on reaching out to them, go, you know, go ahead. But I don't post personal pictures like that. I don't post pictures from my college days or my high school days yeah. or post any connection that I have with anyone that I know in real life. Just because you don't see it on my channel doesn't mean it's not happening in my real life. Um, and, and the unbelievable nerve and cheek for anybody to make the assumption that I don't have a life off this channel because I don't show it on my channel. Well, some of us are cautious. Some of us prefer not to show that stuff. This is the exact reason why Negs and I never started a couples channel, because we don't want to show our day-to-day -day interactions, first of all, because they're incredibly boring and I don't think anybody would watch, but also because we don't want to involve his family on a channel. We don't want to involve his kids on a channel because we know exactly what would happen. I mean, one content creator already went on one of his son's pages, screenshotted a picture of him, sent it to somebody else, was circulating this picture. A kid who hasn't been on Negs' channel since he was very, very young who has no YouTube presence whatsoever, who has never harmed anyone. But this is, the, this is the stuff that these people do, and they excuse themselves for this. They don't think that that is crossing a line. They give themselves permission to do it. Um, so again, we know how this stuff works, and yeah. that is why we have chosen not to show our family, um, not to show a lot of what we do together online because we just don't want to expose anyone to unneeded harassment. I will wholeheartedly agree with you. In this type of space, a lot of people are saying girl girl world is very toxic and brutal. A lot of people say that this is one of the most brutal communities on YouTube where, yeah, if you show your family members, well, people are going to look into them. Uh, reverse Google image search, you know, print screen, do all sorts of stuff to find out who they are. We've seen it time right. and time again. And, you know, the best thing to do is not even mention your family members. Uh, don't say their names. Don't show any imagery of them. Don't put them on your your Instagram or your Twitter. Don't do it, or Facebook. And you got to be cautious of people who, you know, try and talk to you because then you could be cool with one person one day, all of a sudden they're they're your immortal enemy and they have, you know, beef with you over the silliest things. Mm -hmm. It's so ridiculous what has occurred. Even in my short time, you know, having certain mods that, you know, you thought were like, hey, they, this is good people. Then all of a sudden they're talking shit about you because, you know, they keep getting into fights and then they want you to break it up. And if you don't break up the fight, then now they're mad at you and they're making videos. It's so completely idiotic to me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And um, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I had Kiwi Farms infiltrate my Facebook. Um, I don't know how they got in my Facebook um, because I thought that my privacy controls were jacked up to the maximum. But um, evidently they weren't. And so I had to do a cull of my friends list and I had to redo all the privacy controls on my Facebook. But they published a lot of personal photos of me. Um, and they published a lot of my postings. And it's very scary when it happens to you the first time. And then once it's happened to you the 20th or the 30th time, you're like, eh, you know, whatever. I've been doxxed more times than I can count. Um, I've had my job contacted. I've had people threaten me. I have had um, all kinds of crazy shit mailed to me. And by the way, it's not a good idea to mail any kind of harassing or even 
trolling stuff to somebody because I will contact the U.S. Postal Inspectors and they do not play. For those of you who think that they're a joke, they are one of the toughest, most ruthless inspection forces I have ever seen. Yeah. And they will go to every every length to apprehend somebody who is causing fuck shit in the U.S. post, in the U.S. mail. So um, just don't do it. That would be my advice. Yeah. Um, one thing about the Facebook, um, my private settings are tight as well, but it seems um, they got through. So somebody knows how to get past uh, Facebook's privacy uh, settings to, you know, post your pictures and whatnot. So. Mm -hmm. So when you talked about it, I'm like, yeah, same thing happened to me posting, you know, my pictures online and whatnot. But, you know, um, some people freak out and then they leave YouTube um, quickly. Other people will stay. It, it Like you said, uh, everybody gets a turn here. You know, there's a lot of people who just, you know, will ride the wave, ride the community wave. And if somebody's getting attacked brutally, then there's this whole bunch of people that will, you know, dogpile you and keep doing it until you either leave or you know something else happens yeah exactly exactly um so yeah i mean th there's a, there's a lot of nonsense and underhanded foolishness that's going on at the moment um and i would strongly advise everyone to be very um skeptical of what it is that they see and what they read uh, but one thing that I will say is that we will not tolerate being threatened um, on any level, and we will not tolerate, um, we will also not tolerate uh, our family's members being threatened, whether within our home or outside of the home. It's just not something that we are going to put up with. And um, I don't understand how people who have already buried themselves are now digging deeper and continuing with these threats. It's madness. Yes, for sure. Exactly. Uh, well, um, hopefully this has cleared up certain things for certain people to look at it from a different angle and not just, not just, you know, take people's word for it because this is happening way too much. And hopefully uh, somebody, many people have been listening and their ears are open and this is registering that. I know you have a favorite creators. I know you might like a creator. I know you've been with creator for a long time, but that just doesn't mean that that creator doesn't have an agenda and the right. ability to lie about other people. Just take this into mind that you got to look at it logically. You got to look at it. What, what are they saying? And does that make any sense? And if it doesn't make any sense, then maybe you should reevaluate what you think is the truth. Also, I would strongly advise people to, well, I just wanted to point out that, um, and I think I said this already, but I'm going to repeat it, that there are a lot of grudges that go back years on Kiwi Farms, years. And not everyone is aware of just the unbelievable amount of lore that goes on behind the scenes that involves not just Kiwi Farms, but the owner, Josh Moon and the personal grudges and rivalries that Josh has had with certain people. And you're not aware of that. So when you read something on Kiwi Farms, do not take it at face value. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. It would actually make an amazing book if somebody could sit down and untangle all of it. Um, but just, just because you read it on a, on a board does not make it true. It's crazy. Right. It's and absolutely crazy. Exactly. And people keep taking all the stuff from facts. But then slowly and surely, the, a lot of those regular posters are, you know, being shown to we, you know, certain YouTubers or, you know, certain people aligned with certain YouTubers. Right. And this is all like a, a huge, big mashup where there are, you know, certain uh, camps, YouTubers that are using the, the, the farms as their sword. Yep. Uh, to attack other YouTubers and then people keep going in there thinking, I don't understand. Why would you think somebody randomly posting something about somebody else is the truth? Um, there there are certain elements that are truthful, but that, that is what they use. They use, um, let's say they, they clip something that somebody says or they have an archive, then they use that to make themselves seem more truthful while telling you a lie at the same time. 
Caddy Cormormis says, good luck, Monty. You'll need it when they start calling you a pedo. You see, this is the bullshit. Exactly. That happens. All of a sudden, I, I um, trying to have a fear discussion and trying to open people's eyes. Then all of a sudden, you know, Monty is a PDFL. Like, this shit that happens. Like, why? Because I'm on YouTube. And let me give you an example of how this stuff can get out of hand. So um, a while ago, somebody clipped a quote of mine totally out of context from a stream of mine that I had totally forgotten about because I've streamed so much. But they clipped it to troll me and they posted it to Twitter. And it was me saying something like, you go, Negs, you call everybody a pedo, something like that. It was a seven second clip. And that clip was used as evidence that I am somehow the battery in Negs's back or that I have put a battery in Negs's back. No, what I was doing in that stream, because I talked to the person who posted it and they explained the entire context of what I had said because I had forgotten about it, I was mocking people who were saying that. But they clipped it, they made it sound like I was the one who was saying it, or I was encouraging Negs to do it. And then they posted that as evidence that I was guilty of manipulating him. And this was back when Negs and I were just friends. We hadn't even, you know, met in person yet. We were just corresponding, you know, in a very friendly way. We had become very good friends at that point. But there's also that ridiculous rumor that's been circulating for months that somehow I am the power behind the throne and that I control him or that I tell him what to say. Anybody who says that has obviously never met Negs. Nobody tells Negs what to say. Um, and nobody tells me what to say. We don't tell each other what to say. Sometimes mm -hmm. we consult with each other about um, things that we should or should not say on stream for whatever reason. It's usually to, well, I'm not even going to say it. But um, so it's, it's crazy to me how people have assumed... Um, that neither of us has free will. Uh, it's absurd that anybody would say that I would recruit an army of people to defend me when I think I've done a damn good job of defending myself. Um, and I think it's hilarious that people are trying to infantilize me and say either I've lost my mind or I'm crazy or I don't know what I'm doing or I'm in danger or blah, blah, blah. It's completely and totally false. And again, these are people who do not know me. But, um, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. That's People are going to have opinions on the Internet. What the hell are you going to do about it? Yeah, yeah, people have their opinions, but it seems people in this field um, take their opinions way too far in IRL. Yep. So, so um, we shall see what, what happens. Um, but, hey, uh, I guess we've talked pretty much about what happened, occurred last night in general about the community. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to say, DC, before we wrap this up? Um, just one last thing that I wanted to say, and that is that um, I personally, um, there are certain things that I don't care for. Um, one that we have discussed at length during the course of this live stream, but the other thing is I do not like it when people who are not qualified in a field to start then going out and diagnosing people that they have never met um, and stating definitively that a certain person does not suffer from any kind of condition, whether mental or physical, without having ever spoken to that person, without having diagnosed that person in person, you know, people who have no credentials, um, and then making these statements and not realizing how incredibly unethical and unkind it is to do such a thing. Um, it is outrageous, and it is something that I do not stand for. I don't tolerate it. And anyone who is going to do that to Negs or to myself or anyone that I know personally, uh, is somebody that I do not want in my circle. Um, it is crossing a line. It is taking extraordinary liberties. And uh, it happens all the time. I get it. But if you happen to be someone that has been in my community or someone uh, who I have corresponded with or had any association with, I, I don't stand for that. And for somebody to do that and then not understand that that is the reason why I don't speak to them anymore, um, Look, I, I have very few rules in my uh, community. Uh, the primary one being, do not come into my chat and disrespect Negs. That is 
um, an immediate ban, and there is no clemency for that, because quite frankly, I'm tired of it. I think that the time has passed for people to come over and work out their little petty grievances. There are plenty of channels that you can go to, plenty of content creators that don't like us. You can sit there and air out all your grievances as much, much as you want, but not on my channel. But the other thing is to then try and present yourself as an expert in an area, whether it's mental health or anything else, and try to state that you know definitively that Negs is not suffering from a particular condition. Um, I, I don't tolerate that. And I think it is a very dangerous thing for people to diagnose one another when they have no proof. And it's extremely, extremely frustrating. Um, and it is it shows a lot of ner uh, a lot of nerve and a lot of gall as far as I'm concerned. I see. All right. Um, well, it's pretty clear who that was addressed to. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's going to be uh, um, more about that in due time. But mm -hmm. DC, I, I thank you so much for being on. Well, thank you, Monty. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're always welcome to be on here. Um, I try to be as fair as possible. Like, I don't think I've um, said anything out of place. I'm just telling people that there now needs to be a standard where people can't just come on and just say anything about anybody else, especially now where it seems everybody's getting the cops involved and lawyers right. and this and that. Well, there needs to now be a standard. So hopefully that standard... Um, a lot of people will demand that standard and that standard um, starts to show up. Right. Well, thank you, Monty. You're welcome. So everybody, thank you so much for being here. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Thank you, DC. See you later, Take Monty. Bye-bye. Have a good one. You too. All right. Take care. All right, everybody. Uh, that was it. Um, I'm sure we'll have more conversations with DC. Uh, about the ongoing situation it's what the day before uh, new year's eve and 2023 is gonna be a year where we might see a lot of changes here because i do think there needs to be um changes happening and i do i do think there needs to be a standard where people are providing the proof because um what you say can and will affect people and um a lot of people have been consistently uh, affected by the words of others, especially if you have a platform where thousands of people listen to you wholeheartedly without you, you know, showing any proof. And I just, you know, want things to change, want things to, uh, different things to happen. So we'll see what happens. But thank you so much. And uh, will you do a panel with Yaba and Sam next? Hey, if Yaba and Sam wants to come up and say their piece and, you know, provide evidence about certain things, then they're more than welcome. Um, like I said, all I want is for people to just be truthful about what they're saying and for there to be a standard. So if cops are getting involved now, then th that, that might be the start to the change. Um, that is happening because then once you make a statement to, I guess, a, a law, law enforcement officer, then you can't be willy-nilly changing your mind or whatnot because then you'd be lying. So hopefully that change will happen. Anyways, I'm out. Thank you so much, everybody, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.